One method of estimating is bottom-up. Even though it's the most time-consuming, it can be the most accurate. This is where you estimate the cost right at the lowest level of detail that's available within the project. Then you accumulate it into groups of costs until it actually relates to the total project. Top-down estimating, on the other hand, is the opposite. So therefore there has to be some underlying knowledge as to what those costs will be. So again, one of the first points of call for being able to get that information is from other historical or archive projects. Experience of other project managers and abbreviating or summarising or grouping tasks within the Work Breakdown Structure or Gantt Chart allows these items to be grouped together and then the experience of the people around to be able to assist in the estimating of the costs. Instead of estimating costs at a very low level detail, costs are being accumulated or grouped at a higher point. But to be able to do this effectively, you need expert opinion. You need input from whichever subject matter experts who would have knowledge in the areas that are being estimated. As I mentioned, top-down estimating often means that you're starting at a higher point. So in the same scenario, we may have the level of experience from previous projects where there were 50 people involved in a IT project that was being rolled out. And this has already occurred, and then the same sort of project is going to be rolled out for 100 people elsewhere. So therefore, you'd be able to aggregate costs or estimates based on the previous project and then roll them down. At some stage, of course, it needs to be able to head up to a total project cost. But the higher you can go up the project, obviously, the more, the more average the costs will be. Top-down estimating would obviously take a great deal less time. However, it requires a great deal more experience. Support information around the estimates would include clarification about how the estimate was achieved and what basis the calculations are made upon. If you ever have to pick up a project that somebody else has been running and you cannot understand what these spreadsheets mean, particularly relating to budget, how they've come up with justification or costs, you'll understand that this is extremely important. You also need to have a clear list of assumptions and constraints. The inputs to the cost estimate are all the project documentation, including the work breakdown structures, Gantt, Scope, Risk Management Plan, etc. Once the cost estimate is developed, then this leads to the developing the budget. Now, the cost estimates and budgets are so closely aligned that most people think of them as one exercise. However, in PMBOK 4, it differentiates between the two, so we'll do that just for clarification. In summary, an estimate is an estimate. It is not a guarantee. Because of this, we make sure that everything is particularly clear. All the uncertainties are totally transparent. All the background and uncertainties contributing to the estimate are totally clear. Estimates can and do need to be updated regularly, particularly when there's change, variance, or uncertainty within the project. The manner of undertaking the estimate being a top-down, bottom-up, a PERT, etc. will depend on the sponsor's expectations, the budget restrictions you have and any time limits. Your assessment criteria is detailed within the assessment task instructions.